you know when ryan leslie did the whole castle experience you know i don't um, think so yeah so he i don't know how many times he did it but i know at least one time for sure because you know he has super phone he's able to hit up his his you know most real fans and they did a private experience where he did a show in a castle oh shit yeah show <laughs> in a castle you know black tie like real like upper tier yeah real swanky. Bondy, swanky yeah, yeah, yeah real like swanky some, yeah yeah like some of that type of stuff and it was a private show for those people and you put them in this space that you know they're not used to being to that level of experience that's a whole nother thing right it's one thing to just do something cool and private that brings them closer to you but another thing to do something that just takes them into a space and gives them access that they normally don't have. Yeah, you know and, what I mean? and I think the opportunity to be around you, like a lot of fans just That's value true. like being in your vicinity. Oh, I might, there's a, there's a high chance I could have a conversation with him. It's much easier to think that when you're in a room full of 30 people than in a room full of 3,000, right? Even if they don't really get to talk to you or never touch you or whatever, like they still think it going into mm -hmm. it. And a lot of people are kind of buying to that stuff. So you have your, your fan base, music, the main thing they know you for and they come to you for. Now you can take what you like and then figure out what level do I want to introduce this to my fans with. All right. So, yeah, you said Uno. We could do some kind of private Uno experience or yeah. whatever. Go hard with it. But I also could just play Uno versus a fan on live. All right. And it yeah. just be free and just another way to connect with them and build with them. All right. Then or I could play Super Smash Bros. Right. Yeah. Live. But then I also can host the whole Super Smash Bros. tournament, yeah. right? And have them involved and then, you know, run that whole thing up, yeah. right? Then there could be, I don't know what it, I don't even know what it is. Well, there's a virtual live, I mean, a virtual tournament, right? Yeah. But then you can do a real life tournament, right? And each of those come with their own different charges and extra things you can do around it. But it all comes from that same idea of this is just another thing I do. Or like no name. I think she had a book club. Years yeah, ago, yeah, she did. Right? Yeah, something like that, right? And then you think about this. I I have this audience that is reading books with me, right? You might always think, well, where's the angle I can monetize? Well, she might then in the future have recommend books based on authors paying her because they know that she has this clout among people who actually are book uh, buyers. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. have like an email list to blast and get sales and get affiliates where people are paying you with advertising costs. Bring that speaker in. All right. And there's other ways and people might have private experiences. Again, you get into the in-person thing. The in-person thing is always going to be big in an environment that we're divided in this digital space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's always going to be a thing. So it's the stuff that you like. And then it's the stuff that is just a special experience as a whole. Tom one time was going to throw like a kickball game at Piedmont and he was going to charge for it, have his fans come out. There were fans who were going to like fly out here, fly there. And I thought it was crazy, but like they're, they're going to fly from wherever they are mm -hmm. to Atlanta for a kickball game. Yeah. That's how much they like this man. He ended up not doing it. Uh, I can't remember. The, I think it was like just logistical reason. You know, Piedmont, man, he'd be paper, he'd shit you got to go through to get them to do it. But yeah. that was when it clicked the mix. I was like, man, bro, he got at least like 10, 15 people talking about, like, yo, when is it? I'll get my hotel. I'll fly out, right? And I don't think he was charging nothing crazy for it. I think he was maybe do like twenty, twenty five dollars to sign up. You know, you get put on your teams once you actually it might have even been free. You no, know I think I think he's gonna do some free shit and just sell like merch and stuff at it, you know, like use it kind of like a free funnel. Come play the game. Right, when, he could have had a, a special like Tom kickball. Shirt. Oh, yeah. sorry, yeah. For the teams, yeah. right? You yeah, actually, yeah. That's a that's true memorabilia to move forward yeah. with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not purchasable. Of course, you have your regular merch that everybody has access to, but only y'all have this specific thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a that's flex a in the fan base. Yeah, it's a, a flex in the fan base. Yeah. And that's that's exactly what you want to do. Give opportunities to your fan base members to flex on yeah. other fan That's base all they members. want, bro. They just want to be like, hey, you a fan? I'm a bigger fan because I have, like you said, this exclusive t-shirt. Mm -hmm. The only way you could get this shit is if you pulled up to Atlanta on October or whatever at 9 a.m. and played this game. And you weren't there, but I was. That's why yes. I got this shit. Yes. So I am better than you as a fan. But <laughs> a good way to think about that too is, let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you. And it's completely free.
As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. You weren't there, but I was. That's why yes. I got this shit. Yes. So I am better than you as a fan. But <laughs> a good way to think about that, too, is NFTs, right? Mm. If you listen to a lot of the experiences people thought to make around NFTs and say, oh, well, this is going to become possible. Most of that shit is possible, yeah. right? The metaverse and all that, all that stuff they applied it to. Okay, that still has to build out, and yeah, that's going to become possible. But doing these exclusive events, having special ways to know how, if you can get in, whether it's a password, whether it's a, a specific card, or your names in a database, it's a list. All that exists. You can already do that. Yeah. The symbols, like you said, um, like flex on the fan base with the T-shirt. All those abilities and possibilities already exist. For some reason, though, it just takes people to like have that new outlet to actually see the possibilities yeah. for some reason. I, mean, I think people just like they're intimidated by trying to make it work in an in old space. Mm -hmm. But it's like the old space has already proven that there are people that are willing to get it. The new space is the shit you should be scared of because it's like, yeah, it's new. There's new right. opportunity. You could cap. Right. But there also could not be people there that are looking for what you what you're trying to offer yet yeah. so that's what i think it comes down to bro. Like, i can eh. see that so yeah. you're afraid but now that everything sounds like this is built to support that you feel like there's a lower chance of failure and it's still in such a new space if i fail it doesn't look as bad than me failing in the real world yeah exactly because it's like there's not a lot of people here yet so it's like if it doesn't hit it's like it's like Running a bad ad on Facebook versus running a bad ad on like a new platform. Like if it doesn't hit on a new platform, there's not enough people that know you fucked up. But Facebook yeah. is like there are hundreds of thousands, maybe <laughs> millions of people that saw your bad ad. So I, I think that it kind of comes down to like that same thinking. It's right. like, oh, I have the chance to like cap over here really hard, which is true. Mm -hmm. um, I have the, the chance to be, you know, we talked in the last episode to be able to say I was the first person to do X, Y, Z in whatever space. Right. So that's a narrative in itself. Yep. Um, but then also like there's less eyes on me if I fuck up and if it goes <laughs> bad, I can just act like it never happened because nobody was over here anyway paying attention to it. That's a <laughs> huge limitation when it comes to a lot of artists and potential embarrassment. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's part of insecurity that comes with not just a lot of people in general, but especially the personality type who wants to be an artist. Yeah. Right. But a lot of conversations that I have with artists, there's a, a, a lot of barriers or limiting beliefs that come up around embarrassment of some sort yeah which is weird because you're supposed to want to stick out right and part of the stick out risk is embarrassing and, and potential embarrassment <laughs> potential embarrassment there's this this concept right that most people actually do not want to stand out mm. most people not to think about artists that's why we probably put certain people on a pedestal all right, just because they are standing out and we innately understand that there's danger with standing out, right? And that's why the crowd doesn't want to stand out, mm. right? Because if I'm out there, it's a risk. I, it's just me out here, right? Yes, there's a lot of rewards that come with it, taking that risk, if you happen to survive out there, but most people don't survive out there, all right? So you look at zebras and I think it was, uh, what's his name? Jordan Peterson that was, uh, talking about this that I heard. He was talking about how zebras are, you know, they're striped. Mm -hmm. So you're like, well, how is that built for camouflage? Right? It's like the lions in this area are more camouflage with the backdrop than zebras are. Mm -hmm. Right? But they move in these herds. So they're more camouflaged amongst each other. Right? And they're not standing out. The, the way a lion identifies them is because especially you know lions oftentimes they attack together mm. right oh this one got a, a hobbling leg they can barely 
move or, or that one's bleeding. Yeah. So we can all agree that we're chasing this one. But when all of them are good, you just keep lost. You keep you get lost. Yeah. Like, oh, I was chasing that. One. I, was, I thought we were chasing that one, bro. I was like, no, nah, man. I'm yeah. not here. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on? So, like that risk of standing out, right? That's how we translate that to humans. Yeah. It's like people wait. One of people say there's this innate feeling. I think a lot of times people want the rewards of standing out, but then that risk just to actually do it. You know, oh shoot, you gonna get canceled? You gonna get whatever, whatever, whatever? Yeah. People gonna walk up to you in public. Yeah, people walk up to you in public, and yeah. it's a weird feeling. I, mean, I know the first time you experience like all of that is just like a weird thing when people, yeah. are, oh, what's up? And you're like, do I know you? Now? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. You know, like, dang, these people they see me before I see them. Yeah, I don't bro. Even know that, it's, that's, it's crazy to think about it. Like, there's somebody out there that knows so much about you, and you know nothing about them. It's a very wild feeling. Right. <laughs> right. A, a very wild feeling. So I think most people, again, they under they admire. The fact that someone else is willing to do that, knowing that they they Can't aren't or won't, yeah. All right, so um, how do, why do I even get on that anyway? Yeah, you, well, you smile like artists not want to stand out because it's like it's a part of the job. Either. Like you got to kind of get over that, right? Right. <laughs> and then that came from it was, was derived from why they're willing to look at NFTs, yeah, right, in a certain way and do these experiences that they can already actually do, all right? So. Bringing that full circle again, there's so many opportunities to do just cool stuff, whatever your brand is, right? Omarion's um, doing this mind, body, soul type experience, right? But you could do, you know, gaming, you can do music, you might like watching certain movies, and your fan base might be really deep into it. Like if you got a horror core audience and y'all are into horror movies, yeah. like whatever that stuff stuff looks like. There's so many possibilities. So if y'all could dig in, be more creative. Again, the beauty of this, right, is it actually is easier to sell this type of stuff than it is a regular show. Yeah. Right. It's the equivalent of when you have a merchandise brand that can stand on itself versus, hey, it's all my merch is just my face on it. Mm -hmm. Your audience really got to like you if it's that. Right. But if your shirt is but God is dope, right? Yeah. Like, let's say Toby and Wegway. I think I said that right. I don't know. God is dope would have been a great merch brand for him. Yeah. Right? All his stuff could say Toby, right? But a bigger brand for people that don't even know Toby would be God is dope, right? And it's yeah. aligned with who he is and what the type of stuff that he speaks. So that's that example. It's a lot easier to sell that type of thing. You still get the money, right? Look, you could end up being on your own brand's marketing, right? almost looking like, they're like, who is this artist? Why do they have him showcased? Yeah, why is he on everything? <laughs> <laughs> why, is, why is he? And it just makes it seem like he got a sponsorship or whatever, and you're somebody. All right, so... Like all those opportunities exist when you start to move outside of this space and place, but you can tie it back to your artistry where it makes sense and it creates new fans. And if it doesn't create new fans, it's at least creating new money. So I encourage y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all definitely take advantage of these opportunities, especially the way you can do it today. But we're gonna move on to another topic because Corey, you send in a really, really dope video.